Hello friends, welcome to the 68th session of Hybris tutorial. In this session, we are going to learn very important topic in impacts. We are going to learn what is document ID or what is the use of M% symbol in impex header. So guys, this is a very frequent topic which is used in Hybris project. So this video is going to be very important for you. So guys, this is a demo video in which we have explained the functional concepts related to the document ID. But in case you want to see the technical implementation, in case you want to see the technical example where we have taken one example to show the use of document ID, you can click on the link which is given in the comment section of this video and you can get the access of our member specific video in which we have explained this topic by taking a practical example as well. So you just need to click on the link which is given in the comment section of this video and you can follow the guidelines and can become our member. Then you can have the access to our member specific videos as well where we have explains lots of technical concepts on different different hybrid topics. So guys, first of all, we will learn before starting to explain this ampersand or document ID. Firstly, we will briefly discuss what is impex. We will see what are the various components of impex. I will briefly tell you all of those and then I will start explaining you the ampersand or document ID in impex header. So guys, firstly, what is impex? So impex is basically guys import and export. So impex is import or and export. So which means this impex concept is used for importing the data into DB or exporting the data from the DB. This means if you have to let's suppose employee you have an employee table and if you have to populate the employee data into the employee table. So this is the one way impex is the one way through the impex concept you can import the data into the employee table. Similarly, if you want to, you know, import the data into the product table, you can import the data using the impex concept, right? So for example, guys, I am saying I want to import the data into the employee table. So for that, I will write a very simple impex. I will write something like this insert update employee. Okay, so this is what I am writing. Then I will be writing insert update employee UID. Okay, so UID unique is equal to true. I will explain you why I am writing over here unique is equal to true. So here I am writing unique is equal to true. And if I have to update some name as well, I can mention the name as well. Now this is the header or these are the columns I have specified that I want to populate the records in which columns of employee table one column is UID second is the name. So these are the two columns in which I want to populate the data. So what data I want to populate let's suppose UID is one two three or I'm giving just a unique ID let's say one and name is say hybrid tube. Okay. So this is the one record I have populated into the employee table. If you want to see, I can show you as well. I can just uh, copy this and then I can go to the HSC. So you can see guys, I have already done the B2C accelerator setup. That is why I am able to open the back office or I am able to open the HSC in case you have not done the B2C accelerator setup in your system. You can watch our video. The link of video is given in the description box as well as on the top right corner in card section. So you can also do the B2C accelerator setup and you can also do the local setup in your system as well. But since I have already done this setup, that is why I am able to open these uh, cockpits. So what I will do guys to import this impacts to import this impacts, I have to go to the impacts console. 
for that firstly i have to go to hse so this is the hse this is the url of hse okay then i have to go to the console and i will go to the impex import this is the import console guys okay so i will just paste the impex over here like this you can see okay i will do the validate content once i will do the validate content it is basically validating the all content of impex okay if i just import this content you can see i'm just importing this content now it is basically feeding the data into the into the employee table now you can see import has been finished successfully so it means now i have imported the data into the database now you will say i want to cross check where actually that data has been imported so for that uh, what i can do i can make a flexible search query like this and i can just write one query select star from employee it means i am checking the data into the employee table and guys i have already created one video on the impacts there i have deta detailed explanation of all these concepts like why we have this curly bracket right or all the syntaxes of the impacts like what is the meaning of insert update why i have not written simply insert why i have not written simply update so in that video i have uh, explained all these topics in very depth so you can just watch that video and you can learn the basics of the impacts the link of the video is given in the description box as well as on the top right corner in card section so you can just click on that link and then there you can just view all the contents of the impacts okay so you can see i am going to the make a query into the table select star from employee where uid is where uid is equal to like what was the uid we had imported uid was one okay so i will write over here one let's see whether we have any data or not so you can see we have one row and this row got created today only on 24th of july right so me it means i have now inserted the data into the db right so you can see this is the name hybris tube and same the name we had given over here that's why this name is present it means data has been imported successfully now we can safely say that impex is one of the mechanism to import the data into the hybris db so this db can be anything maybe it can be hsql db it can be oracle db or it can be mysql db but impex is one of the way to import the data into the hybris db i hope guys this is clear to you very quickly i can just tell you all the components of the impacts guys this is called as the mode insert update we have multiple type of modes one mode is insert update okay so insert update will basically check if the data if this data the unique which you have mentioned if this uid is already present then it will just update that record like if the name is something else then it will just update that record with the name hybris tube right but insert means it will always create a new record it will always create a new record so it will always try to create a new record but it will create a problem if that record already exists let's say this record one is now already exist if i try to run the impex insert employee uid unique is equal to true name this right now this data is already present and if i try to run this impex this will get failed let's see if it gets failed or not so that is the problem of using the insert mode okay let's say uh, i'm just trying to import this content you can see it is failing it says that this item already exists right that's why we see insert update is the best mode okay insert i hope you understand this third mode is update okay so update means it will update the existing record this record is already there right so update means this will update the existing record so now it means that record has to be present if that record is not present that impacts will get failed okay so it's not like that insert update if uh, the record is present it will just update 
if it is not present it will create a new one so that is why we say insert update mode is the safest mode so update and insert we have to use only in those scenarios where we know whether that record is actually present or not like update means i am writing over here update so here i am saying i want to update the name of the unique uid from hybris tube to say amandeep okay then i will use the impacts update impacts with update mode so you can see if i do this it will basically update the name update the name as amandeep if you go to the uh, flexible search you can check this as well i will just write over here select star from employee from employee where uid is one now you will see instead of hybris tube name name will be amandeep okay name is you can see now amandeep okay but the problem with the update mode is that that record has to be present for example if i just write like this because there is no record with the uid as two that's why this impacts will get failed so you can see if i try to import this data it is getting failed it says no existing item found for the update okay so i hope now it is clear to you what all type of modes we have right one mode uh, another is remove right if you have to remove this record from the db let's say you want to remove the record so you can see remove employee uid unique is equal to two you can skip the name right so uh, we know that there is a record with uid as one okay so you can use this impex and this will basically remove this record from the db so you can see this impex import is successful and now that record has been deleted from the db we can check again from here you can write a query select star from employee from employee right where uid is equal to one and you will see we will not have any result now we don't have any result now that is why uh, this update or remove mode is used so i hope now you understand clearly what are modes so guys this is item type this is employee item type right so what this item type means guys this is the item type which has been defined in item.xml file so whether that item type is defined by hybris out of box in some files like core item.xml or you can also define your own custom item type in your custom item.xml file for example this employee item type this is already defined by the hybris in it out of box file file name is core item.xml file in that file we have already have this item type this item type extends the user item type so employee also extends the user item type and the customer item type also extends the user item type which extends the principal item type which have this attribute uid that is why employee item type is also able to use this uid attribute i can show you as well if i open the core item.xml file which is present into the this is present into the platform extension over here and if you try to search for the item type employee if you try to search for the item type employee you will see that yes we have one item type employee you can see this is extending the user item type if you see the customer item type this also extends the user item type right but you can see employee item type uh, is extending user and customer is also extending the user item type only difference between both is customer item type has one more extra attribute that is customer id that's the difference right if you see the user item type there you will find that the attribute uid which we had used into the into our impex if you see we have one user item type okay so this is the user item type guys here you can see we have 
multiple multiple attribute one is like default payment address current time current date right display name password so these all are the attributes you can see present over here right so you can see these all are the item types which are present over here but guys this also extends the principal item type if you go to the principal item type if you go to the principal item type right here you can see in the principal item type guys we have one attribute as a description second as a name a third as a display name okay so all these are present over here right so if i try to search for the for the item uh, for the attribute uid which is indexed over here as well so you can see guys here we have defined right we have defined this uid so i can safely say that name and uid are defined at principal level this means we had an employee or customer employee or customer okay and this extend this extends user item type this extends user item type okay and then uh, we know that in the user item type we had multiple uh, very valuable attributes the attributes were like we had a default payment address if i just show you uh, the user item type you can see in the user item type we have very important default payment address we will be using these attributes uh, right in this in this video only that's why i'm writing over here default payment address is one of the attribute here second is the default shipment address okay so these uh, are of type addresses and it's selection of addresses only okay so i will be writing over here now this user item type is extending the principal item type and in this principal item type only we have the uid and name attribute and guys this question is asked in the interview questions or in uh, various examination questions that at what level uid and name attributes are defined so these are defined at principal level not at the user level so i hope it is clear to you that's why we are using the uid attribute at employee level because employee is extending user user is extending principal and at principal we have this uid attribute okay so i hope it is clear to you so how this we are using uh, able to use this employee as item type because we have defined this employee item type in our item.xml file so this is item type this is mode this is item type this is called as attributes okay so let's say i am writing over here insert update okay employee uid and then name so here uid and name are uid and name are basically the attributes okay and this is guys called as access modifier so unique is equal to true is one of the access modifier there can be another access modifier like allow null is equal to false it means the value of uid cannot be null if i am saying allow null is equal to false so there are multiple access modifier and one of the modifier is unique is equal to true but guys there is one important thing in any impacts you have to declare one of the attribute with the access modifier unique is equal to true it means one of the attribute we have to declare a unique value right only then system will be able to identify that which value or this record has to be updated or inserted against which unique column okay so that we have to do if you don't declare this unique is equal to true then your impacts will basically get failed you can see i am not declaring now and if i try to run this impacts you can see this will get failed so i am trying to run this impacts console impacts import and you can see i am doing the validate content i am doing the import content it is getting failed okay so that's why it is very necessary uh, to declare one of the attribute as a unique attribute so you can see as soon as i declare this unique is equal to true this will start working this has now started working so i hope it is clear to you what i am saying right so i hope this is clear to you
now the second thing is there is one more important concept that is this line or this is called as header okay so in the header i am defining mode i am defining item type i am defining attributes okay uh, and in this uh, in this header these all are the elements we have right and this is access modifier so this is called as line entries or value lines these this is called as value line so there can be multiple value lines if i have to create another record i will write like this right so if i have to create multiple records i will write like this okay so in this way three records will be inserted into the employee table okay so these are called as the value lines okay third concept is guys macros what is macro so macro is nothing if let's say you have written this impacts okay there is another impacts let's say insert update customer okay so this is another impacts so if you have to uh, you know you have to use this unique is equal to everywhere so one way is you have to you can write this uh, same access modifier another way is you can use over here like i will start using it okay this dollar sign okay so what you can do so instead of writing unique is equal to true i can write over here i can write over here access modifier is equal to true okay and then what i will do i will start using the access modifier okay i will start using the access modifier like this instead of two i can write like this so it will automatically pick the values so everywhere it will start picking the values so let's say if i run this impacts let's say let's uh, let's see whether it works or not so i will just run this impex like this so you can see this is the access modifier i am using over here i will do validate content so you can see this is working and then if i do the import content you can see this is also working so i hope guys this is clear to you what is the use of macros so this is macro right macros are specially used when you have to declare human value uh, right at multiple places okay so i hope now guys this is clear to you what is the use of macros okay if you have to declare the comments you can just write the comments like this okay so you can write the comments as well now guys what is document id in the impex so that we are going to learn this is very important concept okay so guys if you see the document id where it is used so document id is basically used right when you have to give the reference of any another record okay so for example guys let's say we have one item type user and address okay so there is one item type user which we have already seen okay and there is another item type address okay if i try to search the item type address you can see we have another item type address as well okay but guys there is a relation between the user and address and how that relation is looking like if i can just show you the relation so you can see we have a relation between the user and address so this is the relation which is defined and this relation is guys one to many relation okay so one user okay has multiple addresses but guys please note down here i am using the part of is equal to true attribute okay so this is a part of uh, attribute address is a part of attribute and if you guys see here i am using the qualifier as addresses please carefully see over here qualifier is addresses i am using over here okay now if i go back to the user item type if i go back to the user item type over here guys you can see here we have two important attributes default payment address and default shipment address okay 
so in the default payment address you can see it is of type address and it's a selection of addresses which means it says that this uh, attribute will accept the values only from the set of addresses okay the addresses which we have defined in the relation between the user and address okay similarly the value of this default shipment address will also be one from the defined addresses because here also i have defined is selection of addresses okay so if i just uh, show you on the back office as well for any user let's say i am opening any customer then guys once i explain this completely then i will start explaining you the document id as well where exactly we use the document id concept okay so if we open any customer let's say i open this customer test user 2 at the rate test.com okay and here in this user if i go to the addresses here you can see guys we have one as default shipment address second is default payment address if you open this default shipment addresses so guys you can see uh, this will be the address defined over here in this this is of type this is of type address this is of item type address and here we have the one as owner okay so this is one of the owner we have okay and you can see this is the uh, this is the address defined but this address this is a default payment address this is default shipment address and both are of type addresses okay so guys here comes the picture of document id so what is document id guys so guys as you can see here the addresses is a part of user right so guys these part of items do not always provide a unique key but they hold their enclosing parent as a foreign key for example guys 